Justin Maxwell in for the complete game shutout here in the ninth inning. We'll see if he can get it done. Three outs to go. The first battery faces flying out to right field. That is the new signing for the Bears. Jeffrey Ramos playing in right field. And that's going to bring up Bryce Harper, MVP, two seasons ago. We'll see if Maxwell can get him to chase one on the outside. That one will be ball four. Bringing up Paul DeYoung, 0 for 3. 109th pitch is on. 0-1 count. It's hard hit to third, to second, on to first. Double play. And Justin Maxwell continues his excellent season pitching. And the Denver Bears have been dominant so far in the first half. Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And welcome back to the Denver Bears franchise. Now, we have a bit of news to start the month of July. Man, two big starters, Benito Ozuna and Chris Stewart, are both out for two-month injuries. Ozuna is about three to four weeks away, but Chris Stewart is now on the injured list. It will sideline him for about two months. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of the Season 7 regular season documentary and I'm looking forward to doing this format going forward in this series because it's been a lot of fun. But the regular season, we're good enough to be a playoff team every single year. So I definitely want to quickly go through the regular season in just two episodes. I think that's a really good pace. We cover a lot in these two episodes as well. Now, we do have some top prospects in baseball, and that's what makes this organization so special. We have a great MLB team. Then we have some awesome prospects who are going to be called up to the show probably next year because we are going into a year where we have to pay a lot of guys, but we're not looking to spend money. So we're gonna, definitely going to depend on our draft picks and the guys that we have been grooming for this moment. The first is Patrick Summers. He will likely get called up next season. He is 7-6 and six this year. He is an older prospect. He is now 26 years old. We drafted him at age 24. He is a left-hander. Much like Mike Salucci and Ramel Koffer, those three will be in the rotation next season. Let's see what he can do here for the Albuquerque Isotopes, giving up a hit to right field. That one gets uh, past the second baseman. It will be a single. Patrick Summers struggling a little bit here. Guys on first and second here, one out facing Ken Madden. They're four guy, and he will walk. And now it is bases loaded. Can Patrick Summers get out of this one? One, two pitch. Inside sinker. That is a strike three on Sam Huff. Two outs now. Base is still loaded. Zabata at the plate. Three, two count. This is a ground ball to Ryan Valet. Long throw to first. It will be in time. Summers gets out of that jam after loading up the bases with one out. As that brings up the number nine prospect in baseball to KO Oda who has elevated himself from a B potential to an A potential this season. He hits one to right field. This one gets to the corner, and it will be a triple. But if, just if, we were running the entire way, that one would have been an inside-the-park home run. He's got 87 speed, which is excellent. He is a defensive, I mean, I say an offensive uh, outfielder. He doesn't really have great defensive skills, but he can run in the outfield. That's going to bring up Kenny Martinez. He was our number one draft pick in season number four, and he gets a hit off the wall in center field. That one will bring in a run, and now it is two to nothing. Here is Ryan Vallade at the plate. Now, it's been a battle between Ryan Vallade, C.J. Abrams, and also another prospect of ours in Brian Rocchio, but Valade shows off the power on that swing. 425 feet to left field. He's not hitting great this year, but he's been that guy that's just been kind of on the bubble. It's been between those three prospects and Zion Storm, and I think the other three have just been a little better. Here's Hitor Takahashi at the plate. He's been floated up and down the ranks in this series from the MLB level in season number two and three down to AAA the last couple of seasons. And now here we go. It's continuing this inning, but that's going to bring up Tyler Miller, one of our catching prospects. That's just a ground ball to first base. 
Patrick Summer still pitching here in the top of the fifth inning, only giving up one run so far to the El Paso baseball team. That one will be a fly out to the second baseman. Is now with one out. That brings up the nine-hole hitter, Ryan Weathers, to the plate. Outside pitch, he goes down the left field line. The one thing with Patrick Summers is that when we pitch with him, he gives up some hits. I mean, he's just going to get hit pretty well. But in sim, he does excellent. I mean, it's it's kind of the opposite of Mike Salucci because Mike Salucci does excellent in sim. And then also when you pitch with him, he does excellent. But for some reason, Summers, he, he just like gets hit pretty hard when you control him. So that now with two outs, men on first and second, that's just going to be a ground ball to John Storm, who is our top third base prospect. Look for him to get moved up next year as well because uh, we do have Arenado, who is a veteran, 35 years old, but he's not having the greatest of seasons, so we'll see what his future holds. We win this one 4-1, to one, and Summers does look good for the most part, but does give up some hits as well. So now we are on to the all-star break. And as you can see, we have zero all-star starters. Every single season in this series, we have not had much luck getting offensive starters at all. I thought last year that Winker was going to get it. Uh, I also thought that Ozuna was going to get it one year. But for some reason, we just do not get the starters at all. Justin Maxwell is an all-star. 8-3 record, 103 whip, well-deserved for him. But Mike Soroka at 8-0, even at 8-0, is still not going to make the All-Star game. Just incredible. And then Ramel Koffer is 10-3. He's not going to make it as well. Trez Jenkins was close. He was the fifth relief pitcher. But Jordan Hicks wins it again. I mean, I don't know what the deal is with Jordan Hicks, but he gets there every single year. Winker has yet to get there yet, and I cannot believe it. Ozuna was actually getting the top votes in the NL before his injury, so that kind of sucks. C.J. Abrams was the second closest as far as fielders go. He was uh, fifth for shortstops. But we only get Justin Maxwell and Jordan Hicks this year with the nod, even though we have the second best record in baseball right now. We'll see what Maxwell can do here in the game. So here he is facing Castro at the play. That one's going to be a swing and miss. Maxwell's got some, some nasty stuff now. He's a veteran at this point. Remember his rookie year, he was our top prospect when we moved him up as far as pitchers go, and he has been tremendous. He won, uh, uh, what do you call it, M minor league player of the year in season number two, and there he gets a double play off of the uh, broken bat, and that one will be his only inning pitched in this game. On to the seventh inning. Here comes Jordan Hicks into the game. High fastball 101. Matt Olson is just looking. And with the 4-3 lead, Jordan Hicks got to come in and shut him down. There is an outside slider swing and miss. And he's got two straight strikeouts here in the seventh. Can he strike out the side? That brings up Corey Lee. And no, he can't, but it's just going to be a fly out in the infield. And Jordan Hicks and both uh, Justin Max will come in and pitch very good innings. The NL does get the win in this one. And not like we had any offensive guys, but still 3-4 to four victory. 4-3 to three victory, I should say. Six hits given up by the NL. But we do get the win, and it's good to see some of our guys in that all-star game. So we move on in the month of July, and you can just see the Denver Bears are just kind of on that track of being 20 games over uh, 500, 59-38. We do win 4-2 to right here versus Arizona. And then we actually lose versus San Diego at the end of the month of July. And this actually sparks our first losing streak of the season. We lose five straight, two to Arizona, then three. We get swept by the San Diego Padres. You can just see at the end of the month, there, are, there is some movement around the league. Teams are, uh, you know, getting their moves in before the deadline. The Rays acquire some pitching at that, that time. Matthew Thompson goes to the White Sox, so one of our subscriber prospects gets traded in that one. And then we now arrive at the return of Benito Ozuna at the end of the month. And we start the month of August with Mike Soroka on the mound. Probably should have been an all-star. 10-1 on the year. This is the second year this has happened because Soroka should have won the Cy Young two years ago when, I don't know how, but Jose Barrios won it over him. 
But in Benito's return, we will face Brendan McKay for the San Francisco Giants. And Benito Ozuna was an all-star before he got hurt. He was going to be. He was well on track, hitting 306 on the road. Just absolutely a monster for us. And let's see what he can do. Here in the top of the first inning, facing the lefty, Brendan McKay. Bringing it to a 2-2 count. This one will be low, but a ground ball to short. And it will be an out at first base. 0 for 1 in his first at bat. Now, Ozuna has lost a step, as you can see. If you saw that on the base pass, it said his speed was at 76. I'm not sure how it got that low. Maybe it's the injury. I don't know. In his second at bat now, facing a 3-1 count. This one will be driven deep to right field. Benito Ozuna in his return goes deep to right field. Home run. And how about Benito? We traded for him in season number two, and he has been spectacular for us, and he is looking for that contract extension as well. I'm thinking that he's going to get it. He is an excellent leadoff hitter. One for two now in this game, 3-2 pitch. This one will be high out of the zone. Still McKay on the mound in the fifth inning. Outside fastball, he's just watching that one. That's going to be ball four. Benito ends up scoring in that inning as Nolan Arenado brings him in on a triple, and that brings up Ozuna for his fourth at bat in this one. One for two with the walk. Inside slider, strike three. And he cannot stay on top of that pitch. And he does swing and miss, and the Giants end up coming back in this one. They were down 4-1. to one. They end up winning this one 7-6. to six. And the Giants get a nice little divisional win. They are nowhere near the top of this division, though. The Bears are dominating so far. The Dodgers are in second place. But the Bears have a very good month of August. We are 82-51 and 51 at the end of the month. You can just see our offense starts to get going, start to get consistent. We beat up on the uh, Miami Marlins here. They're 59-74, a team that spent a lot of money in free agency. They brought in Joey Gallo. They brought in uh, Tim Anderson, and they still aren't getting right. They are still below 500. They have not built their team up through the draft. I think that's the issue is that a lot of these teams that are good now, they have drafted well, and you can see some of their draftees now at the MLB level now that we have seven seasons in. But you can just see we are just dominating here. Denver wins against L.A. 8-1 to in this one. Winker and Walsh both have three RBIs. And there's a whole lot of green in the month of August. We get a whole lot of Ws. As we move into September for the September call-ups now, and we face who else? Washington we face in the playoffs last year. We are on top of the MLB as far as record right now. The Astros are the only team that have us at 88 and 45. They are having a spectacular year. But look at their team rankings. I mean, they are top 10 in everything. So they have one of those teams that is going to go far in the playoffs. Now, for our September call-ups, I'm going to decide to bring up a guy that I've never even thought to bring up because I looked at his stats, and he's doing pretty well for the Yard Goats. Dan Stevenson, .97 whip. He is a closer for them, so I thought that it would be a good setup guy to bring in and get another arm in the bullpen. And then we decide to move up Hitor Takahashi. I wanted to give him a chance, and mostly because of his defense and his running ability because he is a very fast player. When he gets on base, you know you're going to send him. So I want to see what he can do at least for the last month and what week left in the schedule. So I want to check out Ramel Koffer, who also could have been an all-star. This is this episode's all about the pitching. I mean, our pitching is doing spectacular this year. Soroka should have been an all-star. Koffer could have been an all-star. And also, Justin Maxwell was an all-star. And Severino's pretty much an all-star every year. I think that's off of just brand name recognition right there. But I think that these guys are going to be very, very good in the future and now going into the playoffs here in season number seven. So Koffer here at the dish here at Dish Network Field, he is going to be a pitcher that I'm going to depend on in the postseason this year. Last season he came off of an injury, which definitely hurt him because I feel like his production was not as good in season number six. So I want to see what he can do in season number seven because he is a guy that is, he's got some nasty stuff. He's tough to hit, and coming from the left side, He's going to be a guy that's going to strike out a lot of guys. And here is a base runner thrown out by Rafael Marchand, filling in for the injured Chris Stewart. Now, both Marchand and Chris Stewart were hitting about 290 when Chris Stewart got hurt. And now Marchand's going into that back to that starting role. Remember, he got it taken 
last year by Chris Stewart. So now on to the third inning. Here is Coffer still on the mound. No runs given up so far, and he gives up a hit to right field on that play. That brings up Luis Torrens to the play, hitting 245. Hard ground ball to Winker. On to second. On to first. Double play. Coffer is just so tough to get solid hits off of. If you do get a solid hit off him, it's going to be a good, nice little poke like this one. And this is going to be Jackson Rutledge at the plate. And the pitcher gets one to the warning track. That one will get over the glove of Takahashi playing in right field today. So now with a man on second base, it's going to bring up the top of their lineup. Trey Turner, he goes to right center. And that's what happens when you give up a hit to the pitcher. It's going to be an RBI double here. Trey Turner gives the Washington Nationals the one-run lead here in the third inning. So that's going to bring up Jeremy De La Rosa to the plate. Can he keep this inning going? That one. Strike three up in the zone. And now here we go on to the fourth. Devers at the plate. Broken bat right back to Coffer. Easy throw to first base. That one will be the first out of the fourth inning. 63 pitches up to this point. He faces Kevin Newman up to the plate. This one will be a fly ball. And it will be a fly out. Coffer looks good through four innings. Now, Coffer really has his best pitch, and that's that screwball. He has a two-seam fast fastball, a very good slider, actually, as he runs to the base and does get there in time covering the bag. But I got to say, he has every single pitch in his repertoire, even a curveball. That one goes up the middle. But even the curveball is really, really good. I mean, all of his pitches are really good. He's got five of them along with a changeup. So it's going to be a very tough outing for a lot of batters going into the playoffs as he faces Josh Bell, who hits a chopper to short. This one will be a double play here in the sixth inning. And Coffer looks good through six. That is going to be his last inning pitch. He is coming up to the plate, so he will pinch hit for him. On to the ninth inning. Here in a two-to-one contest, Romel Coffer will get the no decision as Hitor Takahashi comes up in the ninth will fly out to Devers in foul territory, and the Washington Nationals will get a win to start the month of September, 2-1, to one, and Coffer goes six innings pitched, pitches excellently. I think our rotation is in good hands in the future. Now the next guy I do want to look at here is Mike Salucci, another lefty. And that's what I'm saying. This is the, this is the episode of the pitching, the episode of the lefties, as you can see. And Mike Salucci is pitching phenomenally. Ever since we switched, uh, he and uh, I forgot who we – oh, yeah, we had DeAnthony Pierre in there. And we put DeAnthony Pierre in the bullpen now in the second half of the season, put Salucci at that number five spot in the rotation. And Salucci has pitched tremendously. 109 whip, 265 ERA, and 10 starts. I mean, the guy is just – a quality starter. That's exactly what he is. He's just a quality starter. He's a spot starter as well. If we do need him in the playoffs to, you know, start above somebody who's struggling, he's going to be a guy that can come in and really get it done. Here is Salucci now. Ground ball to second, trying to get a double play ball, but it looks like Ryan McMahon playing second base today could not handle that grounder. Dominic Smith at the plate, outside fastball thrown on to second, and that play was close. As Madden does steal second, Dominic Smith continues this at bat. This one will be a fly ball to left field. Ozuna playing in left today, and that one will be easy. As that brings up DJ Stewart, 2-2 two -two pitch, ground ball to second. And Salucci, that's what I'm saying. He pitches so well when you control him. He pitches very, very well in sim. He's just an excellent pitcher. 31 years old Salucci is now. When we brought him up, he was a 28-year-old rookie. Here is Ryan McMahon at the plate now with, with men on second and third with no outs. That one will be just a ground ball to first, but it will be good enough to drive in one run. Last episode, we picked up Jeffrey Ramos on the waiver wire, and he has been hitting the ball well. This one's tattooed deep to center field. It gets to the warning track. It will drive in one run, making it 3-0 here for the, Bell, for the Bears off of Blake Snell. And Ramos does have an RBI on that one. Let's see if we can keep this going. Brian Reynolds at the plate. He's on the last year of a two-year contract that we gave him last offseason. And that one will be a strike three. 
Two outs as that brings up Marshawn, filling in for the injured Chris Stewart, hitting 258 now on the year. He turns on one inside, and that one will get to the gap. Marshawn, well, you know, when I first traded for him in season number one, I knew he would be the future at catcher, but he has been very, very good for us. He had that very good season where he hit about 290. Then he kind of struggled when we gave him the full-time starting position, but now he's in a kind of a role where I like him to be, kind of that backup role. He can also be a, a guy that fills in for Chris Stewart when he needs a day off. I really love what Marshawn is. Salucci still pitching in the sixth inning now on his 80th pitch. He walks the batter. Liner to first base. Willingham can't handle that when he knocks it down. Goes the first and it's going to be not in time. So one out here in the sixth inning. Bobby Bradley now at the plate. This one will be a fly out to third base. Rocchio under that one. And it's an easy can of corn. So now with two outs, Manny Machado at the plate now. Ground ball to third base. And it's easy. Rocky to second. It will be an out. And now Salucci on to the seventh inning. 100 pitches in this game. 100 pitches in this game. And that one will be a ground ball to short. C.J. Abrams, that one's easy. And now he is one out away. I believe this could be his last batter. Tim LaCastro at the plate. Fly ball to center field, and it will be a great seven innings pitched by Salucci. We pull him after that inning, and we go on to win this game five to nothing off of 11 hits for Denver, only giving up five by San Diego. And Mike Salucci is just an excellent lefty. I mean, he just has all the stuff, doesn't have an overpowering fastball, he has great command. And this team is rolling right now. We are beating up on our division. And now Chris Stewart returns to the lineup. We just have everything going for us right now. Barring any injury, our team is just on the right track to being a excellent playoff team. And that's the thing. We need the momentum going into playoffs. Last year, we did not really have that momentum. But I think this year, we're going to snag it. Here is Chris Stewart in his return facing the San Diego Padres. And we'll see if he can also have a good debut just like Benito Ozuna did. Hitting 290 on the year, Chris Stewart is excellent defensively. He excels at getting hits, so you could just see with the average. Actually has his career high in stolen bases with 10 as well. And this time, hits this one deep to left field. This one's got carry! It's gone! Just inside the foul pole, it may have hit it. 366, a missile off of the bat of Chris Stewart in his return to the lineup. You got to love it by our team. I mean, we are just hitting the ball really well. Nobody's hitting too high. Like, we don't have any MVP-type numbers on offense, but everybody's hitting the ball extremely well. Nobody's, you know, too low. Nobody's hitting in the 220s or 230s. We're all hitting, like, 250 and above right now. And Denver gets the 5-2 win here in, CJ, or in Chris Stewart's comeback. As he goes one for four today, a nice little victory here for the Bears. We are just playing good baseball. And now we head to the end of the month of September. And we beat the Dodgers here one nothing. The Dodgers are 12 games over 500, but 12 games back of us. I mean, we are just dominant. Here in the middle of the month, we face the Cubs, and we absolutely destroy them. And a whole lot of green in this month as well. We just continue to win. And now with 99 wins on the season, we have a chance to get our 100th win for the first time in this series. This game goes to extras as here is Zion Storm up at the bottom of the 11th inning and just needed a base hit with two outs but cannot get it done. This one's going to the 12th for our 100th win. Can we come through? Here is C.J. Abrams at the play. He swings that one way out of the zone, a little anxious on that one. Bellinger, that one's an easy can of corn. Now we go to our bench, and we bring in Benito Ozuna, who returned from injury this year, but he has not skipped a beat, hitting 277. We will see if he can get it done here in a pinch hit roll, facing Jacob Junis, who is also our former pitcher. So now that brings it to a 2-2 pitch, this one. One out, low, this one's driven deep. It's got carry, it's off of the top of the wall. And the Bears win 100 games for the first time in this series. The Bears are a magical team here the last couple of years. We have definitely shown the MLB that we are one of the best. 
and Benito shows off that power. He has been spectacular for us. It has been quite the season. We finished this year 102 and 60. We win 42 more games than we lost. Just amazing, man. And the thing is, we have built this team the right way. We have not given out a bunch of big contracts. We have not signed the big stars. We signed Mike Soroka. We signed one big star. I'd say Luis Severino was the one big star that we signed. I wouldn't say that Soroka is like a huge, huge star. He's injured in real life, but you know, he's a very good pitcher as well. I would say those two are the only two big contracts that we've really given out. Just to spell it out for you guys, like how good this team was, you can just see we were top 10 in average, top 7. We were top 7 in on-base percentage. We were number 1 in ERA. We were number 1 in hits allowed. We were also number 1 in runs allowed. I mean, it was just a dominant pitching season. Our, our bullpen was excellent as well. Our rotation was pretty much untouchable. I feel like our bullpen didn't even have to pitch many innings because our rotation was just so good. They went deep into games and we just dominated. And as you can see, our offense is very good. Like everybody's hitting pretty well, hitting about 260. Ryan Reynolds is just below that at 259. Even Marshawn's at 255. The only guy that really struggled was Zion Storm, and he hit about 230, but he is excellent in the playoffs. I'm not worried about Zion Storm at all. Like He's just one of those guys that all of a sudden shows up when playoff time comes. He is just a clutch player. And even Willingham hit better than he usually does, but it's not obviously what we would hope for our number two overall pick when we were picking there. But Willingham is amazing. Justin Maxwell had an amazing year, 14 and 6. Soroka, 15 and 3. Severino, 15 and 8. Coffer, 16 and 6. Salucci, 10 and 5. I mean, that rotation is just absolutely dominant. I mean, nobody's going to beat us when we're pitching like that, hoping that that carries over into the playoffs, where our episodes will be focused on, uh, I believe I will do one episode for the NLDS. And if we make it to the NLCS, it'll be two episodes. And if we make it to the World Series, it will be two episodes as well. That's kind of how I will do it. So I am very, very excited going into the playoffs. But for another year, we, we don't win another award. We did have a Hank Aaron Award winner last year and Jesse Winker. But I'm surprised none of our pitchers won even the Cy Young or was even in the running. We weren't even top three, which is very, very surprising. So I hope you guys enjoyed the part two of the season seven documentary. Next episode, we will start the playoffs. We will, we will either face Cincinnati or the Dodgers. So hoping that Cincinnati wins so we don't have to face the Dodgers again. Sick of facing them. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I hope the rain don't come in November. Because the summer went way too Trying real hard to remember